college football previews week number 10, the Halloween edition of the show. Uh, it's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can bet on any of these games, watch and wager on any of them over at any of their six fantastic sports books. You can find more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. Go to winningcureseverything.com for all of our picks, our previews, our YouTube stuff. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube, on the podcast. Let's jump into it. This is the week. This is this is mano y mano. This is me against you. Alabama LSU. Down on the bayou. Death Valley and Baton Rouge. Alabama's a 14-point favorite currently. 14 and a half. Is it 14 and a half now? 14 and God a half. God bless it. Changed in just a couple of hours. Uh, Saturday, 7 p.m., CBS, Death Valley, and Baton Rouge. The metrics have this Alabama by nine. That's probably about right. I think that's about right. I think the line is inflated a touch. Um, well, Alabama hasn't played anybody within 20 almost. I don't think anybody's kept it within 20. So, uh, Yeah, I mean, you're, I'm, you're right. I'm trying to convince myself that if we keep it close – and it's less than double digits, I'll feel good about this game. But that's just – Well, I'll tell you this. You can't say that and be a fan of a team and hate another team so much and, and be really okay with that. If it comes down to special teams, I mean, we got to go with LSU there, right? I mean, oh, obviously. We, we got a kicker. Yeah, LSU's got a kicker. Alabama does not have a kicker. Uh, I mean, they got a guy. But we kick a lot of field goals in the red zone where you are just going to turn them in touchdowns. So if you yeah. miss extra points, no one gives a damn. Now, you're you're right about that. You're right about that. Uh, as far as the stats one, right? So, okay. Um, and I forget the name of this site, but it, it goes through like FBS rank and all this kind of stuff. There are 34 metrics measured. Alabama wins 26 of them. And... LSU wins eight. So, but are they like big margin of victory wins? Like, it's red zone scoring percentage. It's red zone touchdown. Well, I get, I get, percentage. I get all that. It's, but like, you know, are they close at least? Or is Alabama like when they win a category, they destroy the category, and when LSU wins a category, they barely beat them? Uh, some does that these, make sense? Yeah, some of these Alabama does like completely demolish, like. Okay, passing touchdowns. Okay, that would make sense. Alabama averages 3.88 per game. Yep, okay. They're number one in the country in that. Uh, LSU might LSU not be in the top is, 50. Uh, no, LSU is number 122. Yep, I didn't think so. So, 0. .75 per game. Um, you know, I mean, there's just, yeah, most of it, Alabama completely demolishes them, right? Good. Um, Good to know. But that's, I mean, that's where it is, right? So, uh. It, Look, the question here is, what does LSU do with Alabama's offense? So, the the biggest flaw that Alabama has, aside from special teams, Tua's completion percentage drops 24%, from like over 70% down to 46% when he's under pressure. Now, the only issue with that is, LSU is number 51 in the country in sacks. They've only gotten 18 this year. They're number 95 in tackles for loss. They've only got 42 Alabama is number three in the country in sacks allowed. They've only given up five all year. They're number 10 in tackles for loss allowed. They've only given up 33. Um, I think that if you can get pressure on Tua, one, yeah, Devin White being out hurts that a whole lot because now you're going to have to bring somebody like Grant Delpit, right? That's right. And if you bring him, you're taking one of your best secondary players off of a – receiver and if you've got them in the slot like that um obviously two is going to be able to do all kind of stuff so yeah <laughs> we have a visitor hey what you got are you okay oh yeah okay <laughs> no <laughs> well, if you need Absolutely. some help let us know okay <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good night. I'm going to cut that out. We almost helped a dancer in distress. Almost. You could leave almost. it in. I don't care. It's all good with me. Play it. You, you, you can do the playback. Tell me so, yeah. It's out. I'll still probably cut that out, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, so, cutting back over to 
So if you bring Delpit on blitzes, you're leaving really talented receivers open probably in the slot, right? And that's where Tua has absolutely killed him. Now, if you bring him off of the corner or something like that, I don't look at Alabama running a lot of uh, post routes in this one, but Tua has been absolutely deadly on those crossing routes. That's where the game could get away from LSU. The thing that scares me as an Alabama fan is I don't think that Alabama can run the football on LSU. I don't either. And I think that LSU can run the football on Alabama. So if LSU gets into one of these games where they hold the football for 40 minutes, then Alabama's got problems. Um, I do expect Alabama to win the game, but I, I'll tell you this, like, I absolutely got a little bit of money on LSU on the money line, or not the money line, the uh, yeah, uh, yeah. on the little, spread. Little Freudian slip there. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I uh, you want to cut that out too? Um, I, I might. I might. <laughs> uh, so so let me tell you what I think about this. I I think Alabama's the most talented team in the country, top to bottom. I don't think there's any getting away from that whatsoever. But those receivers are big. And they're good. They haven't been covered by DBs nearly as good as LSU. I do agree with this, that. This is a bad, the reason Tua doesn't get sacked is because his receivers are open so quickly. Even teams that can rush the passer don't have time to get there because they're just wide open, and they're wide open immediately. I don't think that's going to be the case. Now, without Wyatt in there, that hurts the pass rush a lot because he – he do, when he blitzes, he gets home. I mean, there's a reason he's one of the best defensive players in the country, if not the best defensive player in the country. Yeah. Um, I will tell you this. I really believe it with all my heart. If it is close in the second half when he comes back, I think that place is going to be insane. Well, I think I, when he comes out on the field in the I, second I, half. I, th- I think if like, you're not up by more than two touchdowns in the second half, I think we can win the game. Yeah. I, I, I think it this is, needs to be one of those situations for Alabama where you get up early and Tua doesn't play the fourth quarter. But if if you don't have that situation and you're not running away with it, I, th- I think this Alabama team hasn't been hit in the mouth by anybody. And while it's really easy to look good, all these games when you just push anybody around as much as you want, we offensively, not the greatest team in the world, light years better than Arkansas. Arkansas puts up 31 on y'all. Yeah. If you let LSU put up 31, I think we can win the game. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. I feel I went into this week thinking I just want to keep it close. If we keep it within 10, nobody else has done that. I would love to say they don't beat us by double digits, and maybe that's even room to like get into the playoff for the fourth spot because nobody else is going to have that on the resume. And the more the week goes on, I just see not there's not flaws in Alabama. It's just I can you see haven't that you, seen it you, against you really haven't good played teams. anybody. Louisville, well, everybody look, beats everybody puts up fifty against the Louisville. strength of schedule. Alabama's number sixty six. LSU strength of schedule is number one. Number one, yeah. uno momento, por favor, one moment please. There's there's there is no one else in the list. Like number two, three, four, five, and six can add all their strength of schedules up, and it's not LSU right now. Agree. We battle tested. I love that. And like I said, now Alabama could come out first play of the game, third play of the game, score a touchdown like they usually do, sixty yard bomb and, and, and break our backs quick. That might happen. I'm just gonna say, if if it's close going into halftime, when you come out after halftime, it doesn't matter who gets the ball first. It do, that place is going to be more electric. Excuse me, than any other place I've ever seen. I uh, I am prepared for that. Yeah, I I am too. I am too. So yeah, I think it's going to be a fun game. Gonna we're going to figure out exactly what Alabama is. We're going to figure out exactly what LSU is. Um, See, I don't, but I don't know that we are in that sense. If Alabama beats them by fifteen. Do we really did we learn anything about LSU? I think it justified like where they are. 
you, you'd still think they're a top five team in the country. Now they won't be ranked that obviously they'll have to fall behind one of those, some of those. Yeah. I mean, that's, teams. I, I think LSU is a top 10 team. Yeah. Like, I and, do too, and, and, and I don't know that anything in there. I think in the they out- can beat any other yeah. top ten. Team. I don't. I don't think there's any outcome that would make them not be a top ten team when it's done. Well, I think if if Alabama goes out and hammers them by like five touchdowns yeah, or something, if, but that if, I don't. I don't see I don't that happening. That I don't think it's I mean, gonna happen either. I mean, yeah, if but, LSU beats y'all by three, four touchdowns, are you are are you out of the playoff race? I mean, it's just done. You can't I come mean, back it, from that. I think if Alabama gets beat the way that Ohio State got beat, yeah, then but nobody really sees that because Ohio State's a dog team. Yeah, agreed. That's still a top ten team according to the playoff committee. It's a but dog anyway, team. That's what I said. Right. I stand by it. We spent forever on Alabama LSU. We so should have. This is the biggest game this is in the, the biggest country. Game. Now, of the of the season, not just of the weekend, of the season. The other big game that's also on CBS. Sorry, Kentucky. We took all your glory. <laughs> Georgia minus nine and a half at Kentucky Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. The over under is forty three and a half. Saturday, two thirty p.m. on CBS. So CBS got some good matches. CBS ratings. They Ooh, the advertising we. dollars. What do you think it's going to cost to get some play there this weekend? Uh, I would. I mean, it's millions and millions and millions yeah. of dollars. It's crazy. I, I would bet it's it's so, pretty pricey. Because the, this the majority of the college football country is going to just flip it on to, to the, CBS yes, and then leave. It, this is this is one of the situations where the SEC is king. And what's weird is is you don't even expect like we got a Kentucky team, and you weren't even planning on before the season started. Yep. And you're like, man, we're had making, no idea. We're making money off these guys. The metrics have Georgia minus nine point four, so the number is ten. The number is debt one. It, right now, it's nine and a half. Okay, right, right. now, it's well, nine I, and saw, half. I saw it at ten before uh, before we made picks. This I'm is picks. one of my gambling picks. Uh, I'll, I'll, right. go and I'll give you some of my it, look. Georgia is two and three against the give spread. The last five as a road favorite. Kentucky six and four, and five and five straight up in their last ten as an underdog. Uh, look, Kentucky's got a hell of a run defense. If Georgia cannot run the football and you leave it completely up to Jake Fromm, the other side of this is if Kentucky doesn't turn the football over, I don't know that Georgia can generate enough points to cover the line, right? Like, they hadn't really done that this year. Like, look at it, even Missouri, you know? Like, the Missouri game. Uh, oh, you're fl- right. The, I lost money on that. Look, no, look right. at the Florida game. <laughs> yep. You know, the Florida game, same thing. If if Felipe Franks does not turn the football over, if they're not dropping the ball all over the place. But that's what Franks does, though. I like, know. You kind of got to build that into what you're thinking. I, well, I understand that, but at the same time, he didn't do it against LSU. And he he, he had oh, started no. doing really you're well. Right. So no, that was, That's the game of his life. Yeah. I mean, it really is the game of his life. Yeah, it absolutely was. And he still wasn't even that good. No, um, he just didn't turn the ball. He just didn't make the mistakes. And that's the thing. I, if Kentucky will not make the mistakes – then you they think, will absolutely be in right. this. So I, you, you hinted a little bit towards your gambling picks. Let me ask you a question. I, I have certain rules in gambling. Sometimes I follow them. Sometimes I, I ignore my own advice. One of the rules is you never bet on an underdog you don't think can win the game. Do you think they can win the game? I think Kentucky could win the game. Wow. All right. I don't I, trust, I have trust the every, team. Every week I see Kentucky and I say, I want to give them props. I want to get behind them. I want to believe in this team. Nah, I'm going to bet against them. I'm going to well, bet look, against so, them. Now, I will tell you, last week I bet on them. We made some money. Made some dough. And even thank, then, they really probably should have won that, that game. Was, that was total fluke luck. But I do think that, that Kentucky last week might have been looking a little bit ahead, mm-hmm. which I know is ridiculous. They're not good enough to look ahead to uh, anybody. You, you don't think that, but – with well, they're Georgia not historically to town, a winner to where you can just look ahead. It, agreed, and and they found that out. Well, I'll right? tell you this: I'm not I'm not touching this game as far as I'm going to enjoy it. I think it's going to be a really fun game to watch. As much as I I like to hate on Georgia and I like to make fun of of their running backs and all the steroids they take, Holyfield is just a a freak of an athlete, yeah, man. Yeah, he really is. Like, like I do want to see this Kentucky run defense against Holyfield. I don't want to see him against Swift. Why do they give Swift 30 touches and Holyfield 12? I don't understand that. I don't understand it either. Kentucky, uh, Can you pay by the me a million dollars to be an offensive coordinator? Because I'm just going to hand to that guy 40 times. Kentucky gives up 3.3 yards per run. That's number 15 in the country. And they only give up 4.59 yards per play. That's number 13 in the country. That's pretty good. Yeah. 
It's, and, that, and this is like legit numbers. That's no, that's 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 real stats against against, against Mississippi good teams. State, against Texas A and M, Missouri, against Missouri. Against Missouri's Texas. offense has been one of the best in the country. And, and Alabama, they them, they, the only team to hold Missouri less than than, than Kentucky, Kentucky held Missouri to zero first downs in the second half. I mean, it's just Last amazing. Year. I mean, it's it, look early on they go down fourteen to three. Now you're getting nasty. Then now you get you're getting me buying in. This is how I lose money right here. So I, I, I walk into you. I walk into something thinking I'm staying away. This is I'm, we, you I'm and just I have enjoy. talked forever about the fact that we don't think Georgia can go into a hostile environment. Here's the other part of it: you got Benny Snell and you got Josh Allen on Kentucky's team. That's basically Roquan Smith and and Ooh, Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb. And careful, I be be. I know you, you're invoking the name of a defensive. <clears throat> just monster. And that's what Josh Allen is. Oh, my god! I'm the, If you haven't watched Josh now, Allen play, you need to go watch, watch him play. I have watched him. I like Kentucky. He's I watch him. Be real careful. Kentucky has got some grown-ass men Roquan Smith could have been number one in the country. Can Josh Allen go number one in the country? I think he'll go first round, but, which is what Roquan Smith basically oh, – I mean, he went number five. eight. He went number eight. Come on, man. Well, I'm telling you, he's the best. He's the best defensive player in the country. Well, Josh Allen is the best Josh Allen in the country, but he ain't the best and defensive player. I don't in the know. Country. I don't think he's the best defensive player, but it, that you just okay. Not right now, okay. but he, uh, hell, he might be. He might be. No, let's okay. I think he might be better I'm, than Devin White. Now you, now you got me where I need to be. Where I need to. Now you're just ridiculous. Now you got me where I need to be, and I'm just. I'm gonna enjoy this game. I'm gonna watch Josh Allen. I love Snell. I'm mean, enjoy this game. I'm off of Kentucky now. You, 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 you're trying to <laughs> okay, you're trying to be okay. crazy. Uh, let's let's roll through the rest of these. Uh, I got a bunch of honorable mentions, but uh, number three, we got Penn State at Michigan. Michigan is a ten point favorite. Over under is fifty two and a half. Uh, Saturday, two forty five p.m. Two forty five. It's a weird time. Right? Yeah, I don't understand like the extra fifteen minutes. I don't understand. I'm not it. upset about it because I'm hoping the half times all stagger and I and can watch more good. football. Yeah. Uh, so that's in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The metrics have Michigan as only a six point favorite. Why they're getting ten here, I have no idea. I think Michigan's going to cover the ten, and, I, and they might. I, I think they're going to beat the hell out of. Penn they State. might. I mean, I'm I'm staying away from it because I. It, I mean, I've seen Penn State play up to competition and down to competition. And but I've seen them play not... up to competition at home. They never play up to competition on the road, ever. Yeah. They just either go on the road and get beat, or they play down to a bad team and they still win. They just look like crap. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, number four, we got West Virginia at Texas. Texas is a two-point favorite. Over-under is 58, Saturday, 2.30 p.m. on Fox. That's in Austin, Texas. This is in my gambling picks. The metrics have this as a pick like game, literally, the numbers match up to where the score is tied. <laughs> like so, obviously somebody has to win. That's interesting. Yeah, I I had not, I haven't had one of those all year. Like where it's not even like a a point one differential. Yep. It is literally dead even. Okay. So, yeah, dead even on here. Um, is this game this, in your gambling picks? This game is not in my gambling picks. What do you think of this game? I think Texas is built to beat Big 12 teams. And I think that West Virginia is built to be able to beat Big 12 teams. Texas is is not a stereotypical Big 12 team. Okay. So that's where I'm at on that. Well, I think Texas so probably, you know, probably win the game after uh, losing at Oklahoma State last week. But, you know, we'll see. I don't think Texas's defense is as good as Iowa State's. Not, but but I do think that close. their defense is actually really good. <clears throat> yeah. So I got you. Uh, game number five: Notre Dame at Northwestern. After this, it kind of falls off. There's interesting matchups, but Notre Dame at Northwestern over under fifty three and a half. Saturday six fifteen p.m. ESPN in Evanston, Illinois. This is the one that's competing with uh, with Alabama LSU. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, me I too. was real excited to watch this game. I mean, I'm gonna have it on the iPad, but uh, I will say that I'm only giving you one fact. Okay. Notre Dame is one and eight straight up on the road against Power Five teams in November since 2013. Bam, one and eight. One and eight. The only win was over Pittsburgh in like 2015. They've hmm. lost every game to USC on the road. Every game to Stanford. They lost to Northwestern in 2013. Like, yeah. I so in 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 good faith to our boys from West Lot, people hear us talk about them. There's some dudes from Northwestern. We like them. You can go download the podcast, Westlight Pirates. They, it, I tried to help them out with this Wisconsin win. 
I've, I've been I've been so bad betting all these games the last couple weeks. I I, threw, <laughs> I may have threw a few dollars on Wisconsin, and I'm quite certain that I am the reason that Northwestern pulled that upset off. It, it wasn't because Hornibrook was out, or no. because Wisconsin fumbled the ball well, three times. The, the fumbles was me. <laughs> the fumbles is me. The, the, the juju that I put on them, the, the the voodoo that I do to to that team was making them do something they have never done historically as a football program. Well, you might need to put some money on Notre Dame this weekend. How about that? Well, well I kind of like Notre Dame. What if I want to put some money on Northwestern? Why would you want Notre Dame to? I like Notre Dame, man. I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting excited. You know how bad I've hated Brian Kelly for so long. I'm kind of getting excited about this Notre Dame team. How many LSU fans out there actually like Notre Dame? I don't know that many. Oh, a lot. Well, they're all Catholic, man. Well, I understand no, that, Notre Dame's got to be the other team. That's what the Pope says. You got to do just, it. That's weird. Oh no, you that's can't a, go against the, you can't go against the church. <laughs> that's true. Let's go care. through this honorable mention real quick. Damn. Temple at UCF. UCF a ten and a half point favorite over under sixty and a half. That's Thursday night, six thirty p.m. on I will, ESPN. I will be watching every second of this game. The uh, the metrics have it UCF minus twelve point two. The question is, will McKenzie Milton play? I don't know. If don't he know, doesn't, I don't know the answer to that. If he doesn't, I might like Temple. If he does, UCF could end up blowing these guys out. I like I like Temple a lot. I, I do too. Them a lot. They are a tough tough team. I don't care what the records show. If both if, Temple could play this team close, yeah, just because they're a physical team. Well, let's talk about some more physical teams. Friday, six thirty p.m. ESPN two, Pittsburgh at Virginia. Virginia is a seven and a half point favorite. Seven the metric, and a half point favorite. Yeah, the metrics have them a six point four point favorite. Oh, I'm um, not touching this at all for first place in the ACC Coastal. Coastal, yep. Is that not insane? They could do it. Now, they Virginia, of course, no, if I'm they not get a, through I'm all not these. I'm a Pitt fan. If Virginia so. gets through all these, they still got to go play in Blacksburg at the end of the season. They've not beaten Virginia Tech since 2003. And before that, it was 1998. This might be the year to do so. it, though. Oh, it, it might be. This it might Tech be. team is driving me insane. Yeah. Uh, Iowa at Purdue, Saturday, 2.30 p.m. ESPN2. Purdue is a three-point favorite at home. Uh, it's in my game of picks. But go watch the gambling picks thing. Iowa at Purdue. Okay. Yeah. Cal at Washington State. Washington State is a ten and a half point favorite. That one I didn't write down times on these. Uh that one is uh is Saturday night. Like the Pac twelve after night. dark? Like yeah, nine I think, I think it's nine thirty. Good. So I, I can get to, I'll get to watch the back half of that if I'm yep. still alive. Texas A and M at Auburn. Uh Auburn is a three and a half point favorite. That was so weird to me. Auburn being a favorite at home? Yeah. Just the way well, they've looked, the way they've played. Well, remember that uh, that A and M and Auburn have flip flopped, winning at each other's places ever since A and M got in the league. Yeah, but I don't know that I care about any of that stuff. Yeah, the the road team always wins. I I once again, but it, it, but it won't surprise you that, if A and M wins. That has nothing to do with this this game. That's Auburn is coming off of a bye, and A and M just played at Mississippi State. I don't know that that means much, but either way, Oklahoma at Texas Tech. Oklahoma is a ten point favorite. That was that was interesting to me as well. It's a lot of points. What's the over under? Over under. Ooh, good question. Seven. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Catch no, no, no. You're dark. good. I, I these honorable mentions. I didn't uh, didn't write them all down. Um, what would you think it would be? Seventy two. Seventy two. I've got sixty eight. I wasn't too bad off. So. Yeah, 68, I mean, that's a lot of points. Um, that is a lot of points. I, Oklahoma's just been putting up points in droves. I know I know Texas Tech's defense has been a lot better this year, much improved, and their offense can stay on the field a little bit to kind of keep Oklahoma scoring maybe a touchdown. But I I think Oklahoma's offense is just – Lincoln they, they might be a little too much. Lincoln Riley that. might be the best innovator of offenses in college football right now. Yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, Nebraska at Ohio State. This one's 11 a.m. on Fox. Uh, Ohio State is a 20 and a half point favorite. It opened up at 21 and a half, and I'm it not, dropped. I'm not sure why we're talking about this. Uh, I think it's big names, whatever. And then Boston College at Virginia Tech. Big game. Big game. Boston College a two point favorite in Lane Stadium. That's right. That's a big deal. I don't know that this is a big game either. I shouldn't have given you shit for that one. Call this one a big game, but. Well, let's. This one before the season was considered a really big game, and 
and now it's the last game we're going to bring up. Stanford at Washington. Yeah, two, what, three lost three teams? Three lost teams. Wow. The loser of this has four losses in the first weekend of November. And and Washington State's like a pretty uh, – Washington's a pretty heavy favorite, aren't They're they? They're like a 10-point favorite. I, was, I, I thought it was nine and a half. I thought it was double digits. Yeah, it's like a – it's insane. A, Stanford. Yeah. Still, still think David Shaw's top ten coach in college football? I think Stanford covers the line. Okay. <laughs> All right, that, that, that is our college question. football preview.